In this video, we're going to give you an overview of the steps to create the model and toolpaths for the sign that you can see on the screen. There is a companion tutorial to this that goes through the same process in more detail, so you may want to watch this first, and then if you want to follow along and create your own version, you could watch the longer edition. Let's begin here by starting a new copy of the software. I'm going to click on the option to open an existing file and from the project folder I'm going to choose the file shell sign vector and hit open. Let's come over and tile the windows so we can see the 2D and the 3D view at the same time. I'm going to come down to the modeling tab and I'm going to create two simple shapes from these vectors. First I'm going to select the oval. I'm going to come up and click on create shape from vectors and here I'm just going to use the slider and get a value just around about 30 degrees in order to create a dome shape. We'll call this base dome. Hit apply and close and then we can see that's been created and added to the component tree. I'm just going to undraw that for a moment and then I'm going to come into the 2D view. I'm going to select this outer vector. I'm going to hold shift down and select this inner vector and come up and click on the icon for two rail sweep and click on the button that says use selection which is going to pick those two vectors as rails for our shape. Now I'm going to select this cross section here in order to sweep around those rails and I'm going to call this shape border and hit apply and close and there we can see how that cross section has been swept around in order to create that decorative border shape. Now we can come back to the component tree, switch on our original component and see the result of those two being added together. Now we're going to import some pieces of 3D clip art in order to finish off our design. Let's click on the icon to import a component or 3D model. From the project folder, I'm going to choose the file called Banner 11 and hit open. I'm going to take that and use the align tools to center that in the middle of our material. We'll hit close there and then with that still selected, I'm going to scale it. So we're going to increase the size to 13 inches, automatically scaling the um, Y value for this or the height and hit close and then I'm going to use the transform tool in order to move that relative to its current position down by negative 1.6 inches in the Y direction. Now if we hit close I can see at the moment this is just adding to the other components in the part. What I want it to do is blend in or merge with them. So with that selected I'm going to click on the wrench so that I can see the properties for that particular 3D object just adjust the name and then I'm going to choose the middle option here for the combine modes so that it will be set to merge with the other components and now we can see that blending through. Some of it though is being lost because of the height of the different elements that we've got within the design. So now I'm going to come in, I'm going to adjust the shape height for the banner. I'm going to actually reduce that first so we'll change the shape height to 0.4 hitting the spacebar to apply that and then I'm going to move the whole thing up in the z-axis by entering a base height of 0.15 and hitting the spacebar again to apply that. If I maximize this we can see now that that component is completely prominent over the ones that we already had in the design. I'm going to hit close now. We'll come back to the standard um, modeling tab. Click on the icon to tile the windows again and we'll come up and click on the icon to import another 3D model. This time I'm going to choose Scallop Shell from the project folder. I can hit the open button again. Once more we can see that in the 2D view and I'm able to come up and click on the align tool, align that again into the middle of my part, hit close and then we'll also go ahead and resize and position that just like we did with the banner. So once more under transform object set selected object size, I'm going to enter a value of 4.8 inches, hit apply so we can see that scale. Let's close that and then say move selected objects relative to its current position vertically upwards by 0.9 inches and again hit apply and close. Now I've been using the functions within the software and entering specific numbers to edit the components but it's important to note that we can also dynamically edit them as well. We can pick on any of these and use the transform handles just like we can with the vectors in order to dynamically scale or rotate them within our part. I'm just going to undo those. We're just demonstrating that that was possible. 
Now with my shell I'm just going to right mouse click on the component in the component tree, click on rename, simplify that name a little so we can clean up the list here, and my 3D design is actually finished. There are a couple of jobs we need to do before we can start calculating the toolpath though. The first is to check and adjust the Z height of the part to make sure it will fit inside the thickness of material we're planning to use, and the second is to generate a vector boundary we can use for the toolpaths. Let's come over and click on the icon here to scale Z height of model. Within here we can see the part is currently almost 0.8 of an inch high, so I'm going to click set exact height and I'm going to enter a value of 0.55 inches which will scale the part down. I need to visually make sure I've still got the detail I want for it. If I do, I can hit close and OK, and I know now that this part will easily fit inside of a piece of 0.75 or 3 quarter inch material. Now I'm going to create the vector that's going to go around the outside of our 3D objects that we can use as a toolpath boundary. Before we do that though, I'm going to select some of the vectors we already have in the 2D view and I'm going to put them onto a different layer. The layers are just a way we have to organize our 2D data. It's going to be easier for me if those objects are undrawn for the moment. Now I'm going to select all my components in the list, click on the icon to create a vector boundary around them. And if we deselect, you can see now I have this vector that represents the silhouette of my 3D parts. At this point, I'm ready to go over to the Toolpaths tab, so let's click on the icon to do that. First thing we need to do before we calculate any toolpaths is to set up our material. So I'm going to click on the set button, material Z0 set to the top of the block, we have 3 quarter inch material, XY0 in the lower left corner, and I'm going to position my 3D object within my material here by setting a small gap of 0.05 inches above the model, and then that leaves 0.15 inches below it, and that's where the part's going to be machined within the 3 quarter inch thickness. We then just double check that our rapid and home positions are safe, hit OK. We're ready to start calculating the toolpaths. So let's click on the vector we're going to use for the boundary, click on the icon for 3D roughing. I'm going to take the quarter inch end mill we have selected here, machining allowance 0.03 to leave a small skin of material over our part when we cut it. The boundary vector offset will force the tool to go past the edge of the vector enough to cut the sides of the part and I'm going to change the name of the toolpath to 3D roughing sign and hit calculate. Now we can preview that and see exactly what that will look like when we machine it. If I'm happy with the way that looks we can see the stepping there of the rough toolpath. We can close and with the same boundary selected we can click on 3D finishing. I'm going to use the 1 8 inch ball nose tool we have selected here, a raster pattern Again, a small boundary vector offset to force the tool past the edge of the vector to machine the sides. And we'll just edit the name of that toolpath as well and hit calculate. Now, we're in a moment, we'll see the finishing toolpath, which we can also preview. And then we can see the result of that in the 3D view and make sure we're happy with the way that looks. Now, if we close this, what I want to do is select the text and I would like to engrave that into the top of my banner here. So I'm going to click on the icon to V-carve, I'm going to put in a start depth of 0, I'm going to have a 90 degree V-bit tool here, and the key thing is I'm going to choose to project the toolpath onto the 3D model. So we're not cutting at the top of the block by setting 0 here, we're saying that we want to use the model as 0 and cut into it, and because this falls within the area of the banner, everything we cut with this toolpath should be cut into the surface of the banner there, which we can double check in the preview. Now we can see how that's going to be v-carved into the surface we've got on the banner by projecting it down onto the 3D objects. Let's hit close again. Finally, I'm going to select the vector around the outside, come back and click on the profile toolpath, going to machine all the way through the material with a quarter inch end mill outside the selected vector. We'll call that profile sign, hit calculate, we can preview it, maximize the 3D view, have a look at that, we could even double click on the waste material to get rid of it, and there we're seeing the finished part 
that if we set our CNC up the same way that we've specified in the software is what we're going to cut on the machine. At this point we could save that preview image and say, send it to the customer for approval or if we're happy with that we could close the preview form, select the toolpaths, hit the save, choose the appropriate post processor from the list and then work through clicking save for each toolpath, giving it a name, choosing the next one, saving that until we have all four of those toolpaths saved and they're the four files that we can take over to our CNC machine in order to cut this. So that almost concludes this example. As we mentioned before, this was just an overview of the process. There is a companion tutorial to this that goes through the same steps but in much more detail. So if you're interested in following along and creating your own version, would recommend now watching that. That's the end of this video. Thank you for watching.